Hey guys, we're going to be doing rust effects this week. If you didn't see last week's video, I recommend go checking it out. There's a lot of good information in there on how I paint in a non-metallic metal style with true metallics. Now, it's something that I've recently started doing and I really love the way that they turn out. But again, we're going to be talking about rust effects today, specifically with pigments. There's a lot of really great companies that make this, including Vallejo as well as AK Interactive like I just shown. Uh, and there's also some really great ways to make your own, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. And there is a video already on the channel if you want to go check that out. Now on screen you're seeing a bunch of really awesome examples of ways that rust effects can be used to really great effect and today we're going to be talking about how to apply them to smaller miniatures such as D&D and Warhammer. So why don't we go ahead and roll the rest of the video. Now I'm going to attempt to do this uh, mostly in one cut so that you can really get a good idea of what's going on here. Now I am using an AK Interactive mixed with a bit of chalk pastel, similar color tones. I went with a brick red and I added just a bit of yellow into the orange and then I've added uh, rubbing alcohol which is basically what allows it to be super liquidy and that's what allows me to paint on with a brush. Now if you're going to follow along at home please I recommend using an old brush. The pigments when they dry will destroy your brush so you want to use a dedicated brush. So as you can see here I'm just applying a glaze of this color across the whole thing turning our metal color a mixture of this yellow and orange tone and we're just going to glaze over the entire thing like this. Keep in mind if you're following along at home, rubbing alcohol is a really great way to dissolve chalk pigments and thus it also evaporates rather quickly. What this allows us to do is it allows us to stipple on additional color on top of what we've already done. This increases our values in the orange to yellow region. Uh, once you get things close to where you want them, then we can start applying our orangey red tones. Something to keep in mind as you start building up your colors is that the yellows and oranges are the more active rusts, while as the brick reds and brown tones are your least active, meaning that they're virtually dead. My understanding based on my initial research is that rust is actually a living specimen that eats the metal. It's not just something that magically happens. It's kind of similar to the way that mold eats the surface that it's on. Once you feel comfortable starting to add in some darker tones, as you can see I'm reaching more into the more dark orange section, we want to start to build it up in places not only where the water would pool but where it would stick to. So in the helmet you saw me apply it around the horns. You can see me leading the brush, mushing it down into the cracks and crevices where water would collect on the armor. These are the places where it's going to not only rust more, but this is the places where the rust is going to stay. Now if you have something like uh, streaking grime or some kind of an oil wash, you may decide that you want to do some streaks in places. Try to put those around the places where there would be bolts and things holding the armor together, grommets and things like that. That's really going to help to give you a more realistic appearance. It's not just going to drip from random locations. Going in and applying some of our brick red now, we're pretty much going to be exclusively working with this now that we've laid out all of our orange tones. Now, it's important to remember that our reds and our browns are very obvious on this silver background, and we want to be very sparing with them. As you can see, I'm kind of dabbing the brush on in places. I'm not really moving it around a whole lot. This is because we want this type of color, mostly meaning the browns and the reds, to be more of a pockmark appearance. We want them to just be stippled across the surface. We don't want the tint across everything that we're doing.
and there you go, as you can see, as I bump the camera. This is kind of where we're at. This is just our red tones and our orange tones, and it's looking really good. Now to add some browns into things. Now the trick to this is using a makeup sponge. Now in my case, I got mine from the dollar store. A pack of these from the dollar store will last you forever. We just need to tear off a bit the irregularity that these things kind of pull apart in the way that the sponge material is made out of is perfect for giving the texture for doing rust effects, mud splatter, blood splatter, verdigris. There's a lot of different ways that this can be used and the texture that these sponges give can be utilized. And we're gonna go a bit more into detail there in just a second. And so we end up using a bit of a Rhinox hide. You want to start with a darker brown and just kind of stipple it around and get the majority of the color back off the sponge. We want to use this like a dry brush. Now unlike a dry brush, we don't want to be dragging this across the surface. As you can see, I'm doing my best to directly push straight in on the model and pull straight back out. And it's okay to tap the same spot three or four times in a row as you can see me doing. And we just want to lightly do this all over the surface. Now I end up painting the sword a little bit later. Um, it just wasn't taking the texture the way that I wanted it to. And because we're using so little paint on this sponge, you're going to find yourself needing to reload the sponge quite a lot. So you may want to put some of this paint on your palette or you may want to work in small batches like I am. But just know that this stage, it's really easy to go overboard with. I know on a lot of channels, and myself included, we oftentimes talk about less is more. And in this case, this is one of those times where you really want to take that to heart, where less genuinely is more. If you think you're getting close to where you want to stop, then go ahead and stop. Don't keep going to the point where you think you're good enough, because at that point, you've probably gone too far. And now to add in what is referred to as micro textures. Now, in my case, I decided to use about an average size paintbrush. I really didn't need to go super over the top as I plan to use this model probably more as a henchman for D&D, so I don't need to go crazy with the detail. We're gonna be using white aluminum by Vallejo, but you can use any bright silver, it'll work just fine. And we're gonna go back in and on all of the leading edges of the armor panels, we're gonna go ahead and add an edge highlight. Now the reason we do this isn't just because that's the natural wear and tear of where the armor would be bumping up against things and you would get these fresh silver-like colorations in the armor, but specifically because it helps to break up the shape of the armor when you're looking at it. So although these scratches and textures that we're adding may not necessarily be a hundred percent accurate to how armor would look after being beaten up in a battle it definitely helps your eye to separate all of these armor panels and to really help the whole thing pop now I would love to come back in and spend like another hour on this and stress out the cape but that would be a whole nother video in itself and maybe we'll be doing that in the future but as you can see I've done little scratch marks on the sword and the armor and that's just drawing straight lines here or there and just have some fun with it while you guys work on this don't forget to go ahead and rim off that base in a color of your choice I'll be using purple because all my skeletons have a purple base rim but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put some new decorations on here, like some static grass tufts and some things like that. And there we have it. I am super happy with how this one turned out. And again, like I said, I could have done a bit more with that cloak, but it's pretty good the way it is. And again, like I said at the beginning, this is probably gonna be a bit more of an NPC character, so I'm not really worried about it. Well, in any case, guys, I really hope that you have learned something from watching this video. Hopefully, you've gotten a better idea of how you can do rust textures and effects. If you want to go a bit more overboard with your rust textures, you can totally do that simply by adding on the pigment direct dry and then affixing it with either a spray varnish or uh, by just putting a little bit of alcohol on the model prior and then, you know, caking it on. And I do literally mean caking it on. For bigger models, it's definitely what you want to do as opposed to just watering it down 
the way that we did in this video. But if you'd like a more proper tutorial on just doing really advanced rust effects for like a building or something where I can just break it down and show it to you like that, go ahead and leave the comments below. I definitely have enough projects that we can work that into the mix. But until next time guys, I hope your display case is always full and your pile of shame never runs empty.